Oregon's Malheur National Wildlife Refuge, established by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1908 as a preserve and breeding ground for native birds, currently provides habitat for over 320 avian species. Ecologist Steve Herman, a retired faculty member of the Evergreen State College, has studied birds at the refuge since the early 1970s. In this August 2004 interview, Professor Herman explains how winter cattle grazing at Malheur increases the risk of birds to predation. There were still cows out on Harney Lake, which is in the, in the northwest uh, portion of the refuge. And I had, uh, I had experiences as late as 1981 with those. The first snowy plover nest I found on that lake shore, the eggs were crushed by a cow. And when I protested this, the refuge manager said, oh, don't worry about that, Steve. That's, they're just trespass cows. As if somewhere, somehow if these things were uh, trespassing, they had some sort of lease that would absolve them from any guilt. Uh, not so, I thought. But the, the, uh, the refuge in many areas, the, the refuge uh, at the end of the winter uh, in the early spring is just a wallow. And um, the effects uh, that one sees are the effects of trampling, uh, the uh, compression of, of soil, the destruction of, of, um, of vegetation. Uh, you know, in some cases, uh, even nesting birds are impacted. Uh, there's, a, there's a significant population of sandhill cranes greater sandhill cranes on Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. And they are often um, preyed upon. The eggs are eaten by predators of various kinds. And the problem, again, at least in part, is that these birds are forced to nest in areas that have been grazed off during the winter. They start nesting quite early. And under those circumstances, if both adults leave the nest for a short time to feed, I mean, normally one would be on the nest, another would be feeding, but they do sometimes leave. Those eggs are, are made very vulnerable by the fact that they um, are in a place where there's um, little cover. So, of course, the solution of the manager in this case is to control the predators, not the cows. And uh, this is a fairly well-known uh, relationship, but I tried early on to, to get the refuge to actually study this, to have someone sit and watch. My students, I volunteered myself and my students to do this, but they would never do it. It's a little crude. They would prefer, uh, in the case of predators, to in the case of mammalian predators, to catch a young sandhill crane and put a radio on it. And then watch it be caught and eaten by a predator, usually a coyote. Well, my line on that is that, uh, that these animals did not evolve with little radio transmitters on them. And if they are so adorned, they at least stand out as being unusual and therefore are targeted by predators. But most likely, they stand out as not only being unusual, but perhaps just a little bit impeded. And that just makes them absolutely vulnerable to a predator who is evolutionary to, uh, evolutionarily tuned to evaluate the fitness of each potential prey item. And if that fitness is a little bit negative, the probability that that predator will, will um, attack it is very high. Um, and those are some of the things that I saw.